sound speeds. And let's face it, it wasn't very long ago that professionally looking motion picture and professionally sounding audio when married together meant one thing and one thing only, and that is professionally produced motion pictures and television shows. But then in the middle of the 20th century, this craze started up, where the consumer market suddenly got these film cameras, and everybody wanted to document their family or what have you with them. Now, most people did not know how to properly expose film, so many early films were very underexposed, and there was no sound involved either. But it was only a couple of decades later that the invention of the video home system, or VHS, system took over the market as the primary way to record your family. It carried sound with it, it was in color, and it saturated better in all honesty because of VHS, even though the quality was not nearly as fun to look at. But even more importantly, it was cheap. Now, yes, there was Betamax, and yes, there were other formats like 8mm video and even Hi8 SVHS as time went on. But then the consumer market got more and more greedy, and they started to want more and more things. And it didn't take very long for this little movie called The Blair Witch Project to blow everything out of proportion and invent basically reality television. So, motion picture and television was not all that was on TV anymore. And after that, Everybody wanted to be a reality TV star. Maybe not everybody. But then it didn't take very much longer before new media like YouTube suddenly popped up and everybody decided they wanted to do vlogging and become their star in their own show. By this time, consumer markets started to get digital formats like Mini DV and even DVC Pro, and the prices for those were not outrageous, all things considered. But more importantly, they were digital, and you could import them into your computer and edit digitally without losing a generation of quality, which was not possible in those analog formats. Sound on the these early video cameras was a joke at best. They may advertise a left and right stereo microphone, but really all you heard in stereo was the zooming mechanism and the mechanism that moved the tape through the camera. And when you're trying to pull out your dialogue and all you hear over it is it's not appealing. Oh, did you want a cardioid or a super cardioid pattern microphone to pull out your audio? Forget about it. Your best option might be to get some sort of a handheld microphone from Radio Shack and plug it into your microphone input on your camera. That's going to probably sound like garbage, if not because of the sound quality, because of the handling noise. Cameras got smaller and smaller, and suddenly the term HD started flooding the market, as did 720p and I and 1080p and I. And then those formats started showing up on smartphones. Where's the microphone on this thing? I mean, it is not even hardly a thought on this camera at all. They like bragging about having full HD and now 4K, but where is the audio coming in on this high definition stereo audio microphone let's bring this all together i'm going to do a vlog now okay let's at least do this the right way i don't care what igtv says do it horizontal but then now i'm covering up my microphone but then not like it really matters because microphones on these cameras are an afterthought and on that note it's going to sound like garbage no matter what you do unless you get yourself some sort of a video microphone to go along with your camera. Absolutely, you can plug up your microphone directly to your smartphone via the 8th inch or 3.5 millimeter input, provided your phone has one. But I'm not going to poke fun at any particular manufacturers. Let's just say we live in the era of convenience, simplicity. People don't want to plug up a microphone here and hold it with one hand while holding a microphone with another. You could get a lavalier microphone, but then what wireless system do you get for it? Spend two or three hundred dollars all the way up to a couple of thousand dollars just to get audio for a camera like this. This, let's say you're going DSLR or camcorder. By then, okay, you can still spend all that money if you really want to, but what if I told you for vlogging there's a much simpler option? And believe me when I say, it's a lot nicer on the wallet. There are many video microphones out there flooding the market for your smartphone or DSLR camera. Cheap microphones can be sent from China for $20, and those are going to make your audio on your camera sound better if you can figure out a way to attach it. Or you could go the Rode VideoMic Pro route and spend $250 and say, well, this microphone's got to sound better. But what if I told you I turned down reviews for most of those products because none of them to me sounded the way I would want my videos to sound? Let me introduce you to one that as soon as I heard about it, I reached out to the company and said, would you please send me one? And in exchange for a fair review, I would love to keep it and use it ongoing on this channel. Let me introduce you to the Deity VMic D3. Booyah! I don't do unboxing videos, but this is what the box looks like if you were to want to buy it in a store. Now, 
What I will show you is what the box contains, and that is the microphone, the windscreen, the Rycote brand Envision liars, and a battery that goes on the inside powering the microphone. But don't let me forget the curly coil TRS to TRS 8th inch or 3.5 millimeter to 3.5 millimeter or 8th inch cable. Let's talk about the build quality. It is a very, very sturdy microphone, entirely made of aluminum with exception of the button on the back. And this right here is a little compartment for the battery. And you have to click it in order to remove the battery compartment door. And then you can stick inside the battery, which will then require you to click the outside compartment back around it. And notice I didn't do it right, so there it goes. Now it's actually clicked in place correctly. In order to turn it on, you have to press and hold the button on the back. Now it's ready to go, and if you use an alkaline battery, it can last about 150 hours. If you use a lithium AAA battery, it's going to last closer to 200. The design is very simple. There is no switches, there is no anything aside from the battery compartment door, and where you plug in the TRS cable into the microphone itself. Now this means that it is ready to be plugged into your smartphone or your DSLR, what have you. Well, once you add the windscreen and the liar shock mount. If you're not familiar with the Rycote Envision liar shock mount, you'll want to be. They're considered virtually indestructible and they certainly know how to take a lot of damage. You can practically destroy them, at least so you think, but they simply spring back and all you have to do is just kind of coax them back into play. And if you happen to somehow damage the bows and you want to get them replaced, then all you need to do is take an Allen key to them right there and you can replace them very inexpensively directly with replacements from Rycote. Now, this comes standard with the VMIC D3. And I want to point out a couple of things regarding this shock mount. You see how it's a little wonky because I tortured it, but it is back to normal. At the bottom, it has a cold shoe with a back and forth little slider doodad that if you attach to a cold shoe, you can either put the microphone more forward or slide it back. And then you can lock it in place right there and that thing's not going to be moving very much at all. If you don't want to use it with this cold shoe mount, you do have the option of using the thread at the bottom, which is a quarter inch 20 thread. And you can simply connect up something like this little gripping arm and easily attach it to something. This looks like a cheap standard foamy windscreen with exception of the DD logo on there. But it actually has a really cool feature built into it, the cutout. This is specifically designed to fit over the interference tube of the microphone and fit snugly onto the liar shock mount. That makes it go a little bit more low profile mode so that if you notice right here, right here is where the windscreen meets the interference tube at the liar shock mount and on the other side, very, very close to the liars itself is where you would plug in the output cable. Now that doesn't waste any space at all. It's extremely low profile, which personally I like. I did say that this is an interference tube, but that would indicate that it is a shotgun microphone. It's actually a super cardioid pattern microphone. It just looks like a shotgun. And there's some cool design features to this in addition to what I've already mentioned. This right here will automatically turn on when you plug it into something like a smartphone. Now it will also detect and work with pretty much any type of device you plug it up to, provided it's a standard TRRS connector. Now, another cool feature about it is if you plug it up, the light will automatically come on, meaning that it's ready to go. And when you unplug that, it will actually turn itself off after a couple minutes. So this microphone itself is actually going to conserve battery power pretty well for you. Now you may be asking, how is this going to make vlogging easier for me? I mean, I still have to hold things in both hands, right? Not if you spend a little bit over $10 and you get yourself a cell phone mount with a cold shoe built in. That allows you to plug your DD up right there and plug the DD up right here to your smartphone. And by getting yourself some sort of a little rig like the smart rig right here, and there's links to these two things down in the description, you can easily have yourself something that you can hold out in front of you or clip to something and do all your vlogging remotely on location. And just so it's been said, if you do want to plug up your DD VMIC D3 to some sort of a camera that accepts an XLR input, you do have that option. If you buy the DXLR adapter, you simply 
plug up the DD microphone here and you plug it into your camera there and this thing is good to go. Let's talk about the microphone specifications for a moment and as you can see they're quite impressive. Let me point out a couple of things. A very low total harmonic distortion, a very very generous signal to noise ratio and as for the self noise it's only 15 dBA which because this is not a studio microphone you shoot with it in the real world you're never going to ever hear that self noise. Quite impressive specifications overall, not to mention that the whole thing is only $99. Having the microphone all the way forward is an option, but totally not necessary because it is a super cardioid pattern microphone. Now I can extend my arm all the way, frame myself properly, and still get good audio because it is a super cardioid pattern microphone with excellent off-axis rejection. But the most impressive thing to me is the fact that they don't feel the need to give any kind of a presence boost to this microphone. It is quite flat and surprisingly it has really good bass response without being rumbly and it doesn't have too much highs or even pick up too much highs even when it's on axis because it's very well focused on your voice while sounding natural to anything around you. But don't take my word for it, I've recorded you a few samples in noisy environments. Okay, let's do some acceleration here and see how it is over my voice while I accelerate. Currently going 25, dropping up, uh, going up to third gear. Now I'm at 45 and going to fifth gear. Actually, that's fourth. And we're at 50 miles an hour. Okay, I'm in sixth gear now, driving about 80 miles an hour down the interstate. And this is how loud it is in my voice. I'm talking just ever so slightly above my regular voice. But I guess it's because I'm thinking the engine noise is gonna be audible. The air conditioner is not on right now, so that's one thing. I'm currently going 75 miles an hour down the road with cruise control on and my window open. Currently driving the same 75 miles an hour down the road, but now the sunroof is open. Now my sunroof and my side window are both open, which is a situation you would never really want to record in. At least my air conditioning's not on. There are leaf blowers all over the place, currently behind me and in front of me. You gotta love these locations they pick out for us. This is a test of the off-axis rejection. If you look behind me, there's a bunch of trucks, there's a train going around back there, conversations, generators, a whole bunch of things. But me, I'm inside of this little crevice with all of those sounds directly behind me being rejected from this microphone. Now this test is gonna be specifically to see one thing and one thing only. Voices that are directly behind you are you gonna be able to reject those out with the deity? And right now, I'm not talking loud, I'm talking at about a regular voice, and directly behind the microphone right now is someone right there, and another person right there, which that probably went completely off axis and crazy, but you get an idea of where I'm going from. There's a lot of noises back there, and there's a conversation directly behind me, and we'll see how well it does. There's light wind right now, and there's a whole bunch of people driving around behind me. We're gonna see how well this microphone sounds, getting my voice in all of this craziness right now. Is my voice being picked up by the microphone, or is it blending into the background? Because remember, this microphone is not presence boosted very much. It is very, very flat, which is what I personally like, but is it actually cutting through the mix, so to speak? This is one of the worst environments I could possibly record in because directly behind me, there is an air conditioning unit. So you get to tell me, how well does this off access rejection work when I have to raise my voice a little bit to get over an air conditioning unit five feet away? So what do you think of those tests? Hopefully you'll agree with me that the microphone sounds very natural in pretty much any environment, does a great job of picking up your voice while rejecting out a lot of that background noise. To me, I don't think you can spend $100 or in all honesty, you could spend even more and not get as good of a microphone. The only thing that I personally would like to see different on this microphone is that when I am extended out, I cannot angle the microphone down. It is in a fixed position. In all honesty, that's me being a boom operator, a little bit nitpicky because I am not used to seeing a microphone that is not perfectly on access to my mouth. But that is a very minor thing because the microphone still picks you up quite well. Do I recommend the Deity V Mic D3? Absolutely. It's built like a tank. It sounds great. It's got awesome off-axis rejection. It's flat. It comes with really cool features. It's very generous on battery power. The specifications are great. It comes with free Lyre Rycoat suspensions. Jeez, what does this thing not have for the $100 price range? Or actually below that, 99 bucks. 
It's great. I strongly recommend this microphone. Now, let me do a full disclosure here for a second. They did send me this microphone for free in exchange for a fair and honest review. But I'm going to tell you this. I did my research before accepting this microphone. And I had also done research on other video mics that I was offered to do for free in exchange for a fair review of those products as well. None of them impressed me, but this one did from my research. Therefore, I decided this is the microphone I wanted to review and I'm glad I chose it because it does sound phenomenal and I strongly recommend it. So thank you for tuning into this episode of Soundspeeds and be sure to tune in the future for more introductions to awesome products that are not yet released and sound advice. Have a question you'd like answered or want to add something? Be sure to write it in the comment section down below. You can also make a suggestion for future topics of discussion. Again, comment section down below or you can email me at soundspeeds at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss out on future sound advice.